Um, and also the most entertainingly titled. I, I guess they're pronounced Schwaup. Um, welcome to the stage, Schwaup. Hi. So hi, I'm Tara, and this is Cassandra and Jerome, and together we co-founded the, the company Schwaup in Montreal earlier this year. Schwaup is in the business of building tools for consumers to help them make their shopping data more meaningful. There's been a lot of talk lately about the amount of data that websites are collecting about us through tracking software and cookies as we surf around. You remember that scene in Minority Report when the Tom Cruise character is booting down the hallway and he's getting bombarded by ads by Guinness and American Express and even Bulgari Perfume? Well, that future is basically here, minus the precogs, of course, which would have been the cool part. There's definitely something wrong with this picture, but we don't think it's that the data is being collected. That's great. Data is awesome. We think that it's one-sided. Those with uh, the vendors are the only ones that can be amassing and leveraging and tracking the data that's out there. While as consumers, well, we kind of forget the last couple of things that we purchase most of the time. We at Schwab are seeking to answer the question, what if? What if the consumers had as much leverage with the data as the vendors do? In other words, what if John Anderton himself had the ability to send out clear and secure signals to get back what he really needed in that moment? A safe haven, a new identity. So let me show you where we're at. So I do a lot of online shopping. These are a few of my most recent purchases. So all I need to do is forward my order confirmations in my inbox to wow at schwab.com. And then somewhere between my inbox and my account at schwab.com, something magical but undisclosed is going to happen, and it's going to show up there. So let's see. Well, let's see how this magic works. OK, refresh. Yeah, oh, it's going to work. Magic takes a little bit of time, of course, especially. Oh, there we go. Yay. <laughs> uh, so anyways, I'm going to go into my Zappos order and approve it, but I'm also going to edit it. I've been running a lot lately. And I needed a pair of shoes that were lightweight, yet uh, provided enough shock support for me. So I'm going to choose. I needed it from the menu here. And then I really only want to share it with my friends. So what we're doing here is we're augmenting the basic purchase data, the stuff that's like uh, the what, the how much sort of thing, with the why, the real personal story behind what we're buying. We want customers to be, consumers to be a little more mindful of what they're shopping for. Which brings me to my next purchase, which has come through now, which is Spent, the book by Jeffrey Miller that I bought off Amazon. Now, this book definitely spoke to me. What we're doing here as we're posting what we're buying and what we talk about when we're buying is, is taste signaling. And it's actually talked about in the book. Now, when, when we do things like buy indie music or even those running shoes or even an iPad, we're telling others a little bit about who we are and what, we, what we're about. So then after I approve everything, I can go back in and I can see myself building a bit of a shop, a bit of a history. I can start to slice it by when, where, what time. Also, by what I needed at the time, uh, how I, how I, uh, why I bought it at the time, including my recent splurges. We're also planning on being able to slice this and mash up this data and show analytics around this data to make it meaningful for the customers, like taking the weather and mashing it up with your shopping history and saying, do we really save for a rainy day? Within the next few weeks, you'll also be able to share it instantly to Twitter and Facebook and email. Now, we're working on multiple ways to get data into Twitter. Or tw Schwab. <laughs> we're working on multiple ways to get data into Schwab. Where is my head? Um, and uh, we just finished this uh, uh, plugin or an application with Shopify stores that makes us instantly data compatible with tens of thousands of stores, including like the Foo Fighters and Amnesty International's merchandise store. So uh, we created this uh, fun demo store. And uh, I think uh, Cassandra and Jerome think I need a little more charisma upstage and uh, maybe some unsolicited advice. Is that what you guys are saying there? Well, OK, that's fine. We'll, they'll start filling out 
uh, my information to order this. Now, the email address that they're putting in right now is actually my Schwab email address. So the, the, because it has the application installed, it should automatically appear in my, there we are. It automatically, come on, there's got to be a little bit of. <laughs> now, we've also been talking to several retailers who are really interested in this sort of thing, you know, and retail platforms. Sort of a powered by Schwab idea so that they tell, they're basically signaling to their customers that, that's, that they're interested in uh, not porting their data. So I've shown you a lot of the data in to Schwab, which we're basically alpha launching today. But I wanted to actually tell you about our grander vision, which I think, you know, the data in is cool, but the grander vision is what we're here for, the real disruptive part of Schwab. And that is data out, data portability exemplified. Now, um, we think that it actually, the data actually gets powerful when, powerful when the customer can take all that they've amassed and leverage it back for something of value in return. Better deals, loyalty points, VIP programs, and even better search results. So um, this is what we're lovingly calling the personal RFP, but in public it won't be this. So I can choose, I'm looking for those running shoes again. I'm almost done. I can look for those running shoes again. I go into the next screen where I can choose from my favorite brands and vendors, go into the next screen, and this is what's significant. I can choose what part of my data, how far back in my data that I'm sharing with the stores in order for them to give me really cool personalized results. And then I'll hit submit, and there you have it. We'll get back personalized results for me. It all depends on what I choose to put in. It's all opt-in and transparent. OK, I think all in all, time. Okay. But, uh, round of applause then for Schwoop. OK, who wants, to, who wants to jump in first on Schwoop? Loic, you raised your hand. Jump on in. Hey, that, that sounds really close to uh, Bleepy. Uh, well, uh, the data in part, certainly. But uh, we think that the longer term vision is um, very different from where Blippi is going. In fact, um, you know, we have, uh, we're not interested in credit card data because it just talks about the where and how much you pay for it. We're not about a share, we're not a sharing platform in that way. We're more interested in the taste signaling part as well as the data portability part. And right now we already have a export button as we launch for your data on the website. And related to this, if you allow me, Paul, the, uh it also leaves with the idea that we want to share what we buy. And I'm not convinced at all that most people want to share what they buy. Well, actually, our target market is, happens to be women. And, and the reason why that is is that they control $4.3 trillion in spending in the US. That's 72%. So we're speaking to them. And in the number three, four activities that they do online, shop online, shop online, talk about <laughs> products and share deals and share purchase information. So we're not changing something. We're just enabling an activity that's already happening. I, I have to go to you, Julie. OK, okay. so the member of your target market, I wouldn't mind sharing my data online as long as I was getting some economic benefit from yeah. it. And Absolutely. so if it was powerful, I would do it in a minute. But I don't, you know, I, I want to avoid uh, my close ones seeing exactly what I'm buying, you know, there's, it, how that data is controlled, I think, would be the secret to your success for this. Yeah, well, we, want, we want to make uh, Schwab work for people that aren't sharing it at all, actually. We want, the biggest part is the data portability. So you could have a totally private account where you can see what you're, you can keep track of what you're buying and why, but then you can also use it for those personal RFPs, ultimately. We want it to be meaningful for one person on the network if they're not connected to anybody else. John? I love the fact that you guys are thinking big. Like, I was sitting here listening to the presentation. I think, for sure, your, your, your vision, you guys are thinking big. I have kind of a practical point, which is as I was going through the user flow, I feel like uh, if you guys have opportunities to streamline what you're asking the user to do, that might be a good thing to consider. It just seems to be like a lot, a lot of actions to kind of plug into the system. Yeah, well, the reason that we've we've actually put a lot of steps into it currently is because we're optimizing for, uh, for privacy, first and foremost. That's part of 
you know, our, our target market being women is thinking privacy matters first instead of like ease, you know, instamatic matters first. And we want quality rather than quantity of users in the beginning to start to build the right kind of community. John? Uh, nice job, Tara. Thank uh, you. You did a great job. I think this idea is deeper than you could convey in six minutes. I think there's a lot more to this than, than what we heard. We think so, too. Um, data portability and that kind of thing, and turning that around so that you get to control how it's used, uh, I think is pretty powerful. And getting offers to come to you based on your interests can be very powerful. Uh, I would suggest your data is being shared already. Yes. You just don't know it. Yeah. Uh, so turning that around so that you can control how your data is shared, I think, can be pretty powerful. I'd like to hear more about it. Six minutes wasn't enough. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Oh, we'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> any? Uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. Any? Any other points and questions? Well, it reminds me that whenever I get my end of year American Express summary and I see how much money I've spent on various items, the thought of being able to turn that around and get something back for that really is exciting. So yeah. I think it has a lot of legs. And you know that American Express is taking that information and turning it around and getting something more out of it anyway. <laughs> so why shouldn't you, as the person that's made those purchases, do it? I think John hit on a, a very powerful point. You need to make this as frictionless as possible. Don't try to change user behavior. If you can get it so that it goes into the natural flow of the way they shop and buy without any other friction, uh, that's a great point from John. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Absolutely. That's why we're working on all the data in possibilities now. The sync to Schwab buttons, the automatic syncing, that sort of thing. I iPhone app. <laughs> what, are the, uh, what are the different e-commerce sites which have an API you can use? I think Zappos, Amazon, yeah. iTunes. Yeah. Uh, which Etsy, ones? Uh, we talked to Etsy the other day. We talked to Groupon about using their API. It's a bit of a different one, but definitely Etsy. Shopify, we didn't, we, it wasn't something that we sat down with Shopify and signed a business agreement. We used their API to create this application that we'll be putting in their store and then promoting to their various retailers. So APIs, yes, yes, all the way. Hey, Paul, it just occurred to me, uh, I'm so into the business ideas, I didn't even notice, but do you know we've had two straight women entrepreneurs presenting here? I, I was thinking <laughs> that, but I didn't want to underscore if the Rachel's point. Rachel's bar is still oh, and here. I'm a, I'm a mother, and I'm 37, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I was going to comment on that. I, uh, if, if only at Disrupt, we don't seem to have a, a dearth of excellent female entrepreneurs. So uh, awesome. on that inspiring... And, by the way, an entrepreneurial judge as well. <laughs> I, yes. I, and on that inspiring fuck you to uh, the, the dad. <laughs> um, I believe that's... Uh, yeah, a round of applause for Schwope. Thank you. Wow.